Hello, welcome to Lil's Vintage World. Today I have my October reading wrap up for you of all the books that I read in the month of October, which I believe was about 22, which I know sounds a lot, but you will see a lot of these are like comic books and graphic novels and just really easy reads. I just wanted to try it and get myself back into reading to like my usual sort of level. Uh, I feel like I'm there now and hopefully in November you will see um, my reading kind of just go back to some sort of normal routine. Anyway, uh, let me show you the books that I read for the month of October because there's a lot to get through. I will do my best to leave links for the books in the description bar below. So the first book uh, that I have to share with you, by the way, these are not in any particular order. This is Rebel Voices, The Rise of Votes for Women by Eve Lloyd Knight and Louise K. Stewart. This book has certainly done its rounds on um, YouTube, hasn't it? Um, but I think it's well worth the hype that it's been given. This is a book that literally travels around the world uh, talking about women's suffrage and when women acquired the right to vote in said country. So some um, are, you know, pretty long ago. We start off with New Zealand. New Zealand was the first um, country to acquire the right to vote. Here we are in the 1800s. And then we um, move forward to various different countries with the most beautiful artwork to demonstrate uh, when they acquired their right to vote. I have to say my favorite one is actually ours, United Kingdom um, from 1918 obviously and 1928 but I love this piece of artwork because it's like the smash glass and I love that I think that's so good uh yeah I, I really enjoyed this book and if you are interested like me in uh women's suffrage and uh, women's rights and women's history then you will enjoy that book on a similar vein I also read in October Women in Battle Freedom Equality Sisterhood by Marta Breen and Jenny Gordel so if I pronounced that incorrectly. This is a book that I picked up when I went to Cheltenham Literature Festival. If you've watched that vlog, you'll already know. If you haven't watched that vlog, you can check it out here. Uh, but this is, again, a beautiful, beautiful book, uh, which does different stories on women's rights. So it might be women's suffrage, and there is um, a little section on here on women's suffrage. It might be um, slavery and things like that. It might be... Um, trying to get the right to education or something like that. Um, there's so many different stories of women's rights in here. It's absolutely fascinating. Some from like 100 years ago, some from like 20 years ago, some even, you know, more modern than that and modern history. I just think it's wonderful. This is my favourite picture from the book. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant book. I gave that four out of five stars really really enjoyed it maybe four and a half actually um there's one uh, story in particular of um this young um, woman and she was killed for her opinion and i was just i was shocked at that i thought what on earth is the world coming to uh anyway i carried on reading some more children's books and i picked up two of the same sort of things so these are the danger zone avoid being and i've got cleopatra and mary queen of scots i picked the mary queen of scots one because it's me. I love anything to do with the Tudors. Um, and I picked up Cleopatra because I've got some big books on Cleopatra that I would like to get to. And I haven't yet. And I thought if I read a little one, it might entice me to pick up the big books. I haven't picked up them as yet, but hopefully I will do in the future because Whenever I read about Cleopatra or watch a documentary on Cleopatra, I think, wow, she is a fascinating woman, but I just don't seem to pick up those big books and I'd like that to change. Right, so now I'm gonna show you a few um, comic books slash graphic novels. So starting off, I have Giant Days, volume 11. You know me, I love Giant Days. I can't praise this series enough. So this volume, we have our usual kind of four single issues, but then we also have a special called Where Women Glow and Men Plunder. And it's a special about Ed Gimmel and his girlfriend. Um, spoilers, sorry. Um, and it was wonderful, wonderful. I love the artwork in these comics and I just, I just generally love Giant Days. I love the story, I love where it's going and yeah, I think it's wonderful. I love how Daisy is really coming to the forefront of, of the group and 
yeah I just I just love it and it's it's my happy my happy place is reading giant days um I would love to know in the comments if any of you have read giant days based on my recommendation and if so how much do you love it because let's be honest you're gonna love it it's brilliant uh so five stars for that obviously if if I have to say then I went to Etsy and tried to find some uh kind of self-published graphic novels comics sort of thing um so i picked up this one this is artificial flowers by rachel smith i read house party by rachel smith a couple of months ago and really enjoyed it this one um is about a young woman called siobhan who lives in london she's an artist and she's trying to make her way in the art scene but she's not really cracking it um she has uh, an allowance from her parents and her parents say right you've got to go and look after your little brother while we go on a cruise so her little brother comes to london um siobhan isn't that keen but things happen uh, I'm not going to say anymore I really really enjoyed this I like the artwork to it I think it's lovely um I enjoyed it just as much maybe a little bit more than house party um yeah I, I just really really loved it I thought it was really good again I give it four out of five stars really enjoyed that highly recommend it um Rachel Smith has done a collection of um these kind of graphic novels and I'm picking one up every one or two months or so I'm treating myself to one because I just think they're brilliant and I eventually want to read all her work. She's wonderful. I will leave her shop linked below. Another Etsy find, this was Fundy Volume 1 Uni Years, an autobiography written and drawn by Ashling Larkin. This is a collection of little kind of comic strips um, drawn by Ashling um, about her time at university. So we have like different art styles as we go through. So we have like black and white, um, and then in the third year, third year is in colour. I, <laughs> I enjoyed this. I thought it was fun and entertaining. I thought some of it was very much just autobiography and some of it more kind of humour comics, but I, I enjoyed the balance. I gave it three out of five stars. I, I liked it. I liked, I like any kind of book on university and campus and yeah, I thought it was great. The next thing I'm going to share with you is actually a little zine. And this is Women and Trousers by Katie Plume. This is absolutely teeny tiny. Um, and it's just a little zine, that is pretty much all it is, um, on women and wearing trousers, essentially. And yeah, I liked it. I like the art style, I think it's cool. I don't really have much else to say about that, other than I've started to get into zines now. I like them. Recommend your favourite zines below. I actually have another zine to share with you now. This is 21 things you could be doing now had you been born in the good old days. Look how lovely this is. It's so, so pretty. Let me show you, let me show you this. How nice is that? Um, so I was on Etsy and I have been looking for some beautiful art prints for my suffragette shelf. So this is one of them. I've got another one. Um, I've got this lovely art print, but I want one for that shelf as well. So I've been looking for some lovely um, prints on the suffragettes. And this kind of popped up because there is a little bit on suffragettes here, which is lovely. Um, so yeah i'm gonna put this on display not on my subject shelf but i will put it on display um but anyway uh this is just this little zine and it's literally what it says 21 things you could be doing now had you been born in the good old days so it goes through the history of time and says what you could be doing so number 14 being bled almost to death for healing purposes and talking about like leeches and stuff like that um i love it I loved this. I absolutely adored it. If you're interested in history and the vintage, which I presume you are because you're watching this channel, then get this because it's wonderful. Um, I'll leave a link to the shop down below. The seller also chucked in a couple of little freebies as well, which is ever so, ever so sweet. And yeah, I'm very, very happy with my purchase. Then I picked up a couple of horror histories books um, in the month of October. So I read The 20th Century, of course, by Terry Deary. And I also read Oxford by Terry Deary. I picked up the 20th century one because I thought there might be in it um, some bits about the suffragettes and there were and that was very fun to read. I love that bit in particular. And then I picked up the Oxford one because I've wanted to go to Oxford for years but I just haven't been. Um, so I thought I'd pick it up. And this one I bought online secondhand and when I opened it, it's signed. 
I was like, what? Uh, it only cost me a few pounds, so I was very, very happy with that. Yeah, I love um, Terry Deary and Horrible Histories, and I'm trying to read a few more of the ones that kind of came out after I was a child, so yeah, love them. It's a really interesting way to learn about history. Speaking of history, um, I picked up some uh, historical fiction books. So I picked up My Lady Jane, Not Entirely True Story by, um, well, various authors, you can see them down there. Um, this book is about Lady Jane Grey, but slightly differently. Now this is YA, and the reviews said that it's really funny, which I think some parts are, but it was really weird. It's like YA meets historical fiction meets fantasy, because Guilford Dudley, um, Lady Jane Grey's husband, turns into a horse. And I was like, okay. And I just, I just wasn't on board. <laughs> Um, I didn't like it. I thought it was a bit weird and yeah. I'm all up for trying to make history funny but oh the fantasy bit was just way too far for me. I was just like oh no not for me. Um, but yeah if you're interested in historical fiction, YA and fantasy you might like this but it's not my bag. I then picked up Mary Queen of Scots by Catherine Lasky. This is part of the My Royal Story. Um, I read the Elizabeth one a little while ago and I didn't like that one. I also didn't like this one. It was something about the writing that I don't like about this. It just, it just doesn't sit well with me. So I ended up giving it one star. I just, I, yeah, I didn't like it. So that is going to go. Um, I didn't read these ones as a child. I read the normal My Story books, but yeah, I feel a bit bad for not enjoying them, but I'm sure, I'm sure I'll go on to a new life and someone will enjoy it. Um, speaking of My Story books, I read My Story Suffragette. This is the diary of Dolly Baxter. Dolly is a teenage girl living in London and she lives in a in quite a poor sort of environment she's living right on the poverty line um, and she becomes someone's ward and she gets given an education and better standards of living and all that sort of stuff um, but then her ward dies and she ends up becoming part of the suffragette movement um, this was really good I'd heard good things about this and yeah it was really good, it was really enjoyable, um, highly recommend it for any little ones out there, I think that you'd really enjoy it, I thought it was very very good. Then another book on the suffragettes, <laughs> another children's one, this is Emmeline Pankhurst by Hayden Kay, uh, this is part of the first name series, this was wonderful, filled with lots of little pictures and it's like a little children's biography of Emmeline Pankhurst and it was lovely, it was a really interesting way to learn a bit more about her and her story, I have some big biographies of Emmeline Pankhurst to, to read soon so this really helped me just get the bare facts um, so yeah highly recommend that like four and a half stars and then finally last but not least I have Fresh Meat the essential guide for the future unemployed <sighs> um, this is quite a random book I picked this up because I love the TV show Fresh Meat it was on a few years ago um, it's currently on Netflix uh, but you can get on like 4OD as well and it's about this group of people and their time at university and it's really funny they go to Manchester University and it's just hilarious it's got um, Jack Whitehall in it it's got Joe Thomas who plays um, Simon in The Inbetweeners in it uh, it's got Kimberly Nixon in it it's, it's really funny it's really good um, but the book sadly was not it was quite random um, and I think perhaps if you were going to uni or you're just started uni then actually you'd probably quite enjoy this but as someone who has finished uni I just thought this is a bit strange I just wanted like a behind the scenes book you know that you get with like Down to Nabby or something you get the accompanying book but yeah this was just a bit just a bit odd um but yeah not for me sadly but hopefully when I donate this to a charity shop someone who's going to uni will pick it up and really get something from it so there we go that is all the books that I read in the month of October I hope you enjoyed this um little book review talk to me all things bookish in the comment section below and I shall see you soon for the next video bye for now